Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, back with the video and this video is going to be based on another tool which is something similar to GQRX. Uh, it's known as Cubic SDR which is available on Linux, on Mac, also on Windows machine as well. So right now I'm running Dragon OS Focal. It comes with pre-compile all the tools so I don't have to worry about uh, drivers and, and softwares and things like that. So Dragon OS is the perfect distribution. I can just simply type in cubic it has cubic SDR built in right now I'm using my hack RF to perform exactly the same thing that you do using GQRX but I think this thing has a little bit more option so hack RF is connected so you can select your device hack RF you can choose a SAMP rate and hit start so let's look at some of the options which is available so right now you are tuned into 2.43 or 2434 megahertz which is actually your Wi-Fi band and this is the signal that you're getting uh, from your router uh, router is actually uh, this is the this is what is being captured by my hack RF antenna right now so the file setting that you go first is file setting so you can select on automatic gain uh, that does not give you an option where you can change the gain by yourself so by just having automatic gain uncheck you will have an option where you can change the VGA, LNA and all of that stuff. Now then you also have a modem settings which is something like uh, modulation and demodulation. You want to demodulate your signal you can also do that. You can do that you have an option of FM and narrowband FM, AM, LSB, USB, DSB, IQ and stuff like that. So you can also do that. Uh, automatic SAMP rate so for example whatever your built-in audio speaker is for your laptop whichever device you have connected generally is 48 kilohertz but you can change this up to 992 kilohertz you can also record these signals as well and you can record it then you also have these rig controls so these are just different controls you can have a floating center control rig and things like that you can do that and then you also have a display settings text size color scheme let's say you want to change this to radar so here we go we have a radar option and things like that so now the main thing is this here you can tune into different frequencies so right now we're tuning into uh, 2.434 gigahertz which is your Wi-Fi band I can also go ahead and look at uh, my gain at 5745 which is actually your Wi-Fi at uh, 5 gigahertz band there's hardly any router which are operating at around this frequency. I think there's only one router uh, where I am right now, which is operating at 5745 or anything less than that. So you, will, you can also see that activity as well using uh, this particular software. Uh, HackRF, I'm using HackRF. Why not Pluto, Pluto SDR? Because you are restricted in terms of frequency. 325 megahertz all the way up to 3.8 gigahertz. So you won't be able to see anything at 6 gigahertz band. So let's say you want to also look at GSM 1800. So let's have a look at that as well. So right now you're monitoring GSM 1800 band. This is the spike of your GSM uh, frequencies at 1800 megahertz band. You can change this frequency a little bit so you can see more. So this is basically a downlink frequency which is being allocated for GSM 1800. So having an a spectrum uh, SAMP rate of about 20 megahertz because the SAMP rate of your hack RF is about 20 megahertz and I have chosen 10 megahertz you can look at 20 megahertz of chunk at one time. So that's why you're seeing all of this. You can also look at 3G and 4G band allocation which is somewhere around 4 and 2100 megahertz. So let's have a quickly have a look at that as well. So this is around 2135 uh, or 2.135 giga which is your basically a band which is allocated for 3G and 4G spectrum. So this is the kind of activity that you're seeing right now. All right, uh, let's see what else I can explore using this. 1575, I probably have to have a GPS antenna for that, uh, but I'm just using a local homebrew antenna, or, which actually generally comes with your router. So 1575, this is your GPS. I am seeing the signal which is coming at around this frequency. So this is probably what is being picked up by my antenna 1575 which is actually a GPS band. Let's try 1090 which is actually your ADSB uh, 
Uh, let's see, do I get anything at ADSP? Don't worry about this. This is probably a DC signal. No, because you have to wait for the signal. It depends uh, where your antenna is located at. Based on that, you can actually get that flight information. Let's try 935. 935 is actually your frequency at GSM 900 band. So there is a lot of activity at this particular frequency. This is actually a downlink frequency. I'm changing the frequency band here. So you, I can just, here we go. So, so there's a lot of activity at 935 megahertz as well. Here we go, here we go. I am also seeing this. Let's change the display. See some colors instead of everything is in green. All right, let's try changing frequency to somewhere around uh, 108 megahertz, which is your FM, which is generally your FM. Let's see. Okay, so 104 megahertz. I am seeing some activity. Four megahertz. Let's try this on M3. So basically, you're just tuning into different FM band. You can also go ahead and look at your view ranges as well. Uh, these are associated with, so the higher this uh, number is going to be, the smaller the frequency is going to be. The smaller this number is going to be, the higher the frequency. Higher means bigger the frequency is going to be. So I have because lambda is C over F frequency, so this 160 meters, 80 meters, 60 meters, 40 meters, this is basically just band allocation. They will give you this number based on the wavelength. So 160 meters means something that is really big, which means the frequency is going to be much smaller. Having a 10 meter band, that means you have frequency which is much higher, somewhere around megahertz range, while this might be somewhere around in kilohertz range. You can also bookmark the frequencies as well by adding them to a group, giving it a name and things like that. And you can just simply tune in on it. So that's the basic idea. That's the basic idea behind this. Uh, that's what I wanted to show and introduce you regarding this particular tool, which is known as Cubic SDR. By the way, this tool is also available in Windows. So uh, you can also try it on Windows and you can also use your RTL SDR dongle along with this as well. So that, that, that works perfectly fine as well. Uh, so you can also try this uh, using your RTL SDR dongle, Pluto SDR, USRP, but I'm using Dragon OS Focal. Uh, I like this distribution because I don't want to worry about like, you know, you know, drivers and things like that. So this is like the perfect distribution for me because half of the time you're just wasting your time just trying to download the software and trying to take care of the dependencies and things like that. So I hope it works out for you. Uh, another good software. Um, I hope uh, you will find this helpful. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, please. And thanks for watching.